Welcome to Bioremediation and Dr. Mekki. In this video, we will explain the, uh, what is the classification of the bioremediation and also we need to explain what the uh, advantages and the disadvantages of the in situ and ex situ bioremediation and some considerations for site remediation. All will be explained after the break. There are three different classifications for the bioremediation. The first is the biotransformation, the second is the biodegradation, and the third is the mineralization. So the biotransformation is the alteration of the contaminant molecules into less or non-hazardous molecules. While biodegradation means the breakdown of organic substance into smaller organic or inorganic molecules. And mineralization is the complete biodegradation of organic materials into inorganic constituents or compounds such as CO2 or H2O. These three classifications can be occurs either in situ or ex situ. In situ means at the site of the contamination, means in place, no need to move the contaminant to another place. While ex situ means you need to move or the contaminant should be taken out to the another place, maybe to the lab, maybe to the uh, treatment place, and so on. There are some advantages and disadvantages to both ex situ and in situ the strategies for the bioremediation. So ex situ strategies remove the contaminants and place them in a contained environment to allow the easier monitoring and maintaining the conditions and the progress as well. So this is making the actual bioremediation process more faster. While the removal of the contaminant from the contaminated site is actually time consuming costly and potentially dangerous as well because you don't know how dangerous this contaminant to move out actually there are several extraction strategies to facilitate ex situ bioremediation such as the soil can be dug up and transported to the bioreactor for the treatment also another method can be used is the soil washing the water can be flushed through the contaminated region and then transfer to the bioreactor for the treatment. Also, you can use the soil venting. You can flush the air through the contaminated region and the air containing this contaminant can be transferred to the bioreactor for the treatment as well. While in situ strategy is different, as mentioned before, in situ means in place, you can do the bioremediation and the treat the pollutants and contaminants in place. Doesn't require removal of contaminant from the contaminated site. Two different methods can be applied using the in situ bioremediation. The first is called the biostimulation, the second is the bioaugmentation process. So, biostimulation is the addition of nutrients or maybe addition of oxygen or other electron donors and acceptors as well to the contaminated side this is due to you need to increase the population or microbial population or maybe you need to increase the activity of the uh, naturally occurring microorganism available for the bioremediation so sometimes you need to use the biostimulation to just stimulate the microbial activity to start the bioremediation process. For this reason, sometimes you need to add some nutrients or oxygen or any other to facilitate the process for the microbial population. So this table explains the substance may be injected into the uh, in situ for bioremediation, electron acceptors under aerobic conditions, maybe oxygen, air, pure oxygen, hydrogen peroxides, and others, or maybe you need to add some co metabolism 
like the butane, methane, phenol, and so on. Or maybe you need uh, sometimes to add some electron donors under anaerobic conditions like hydrogen, lactate, or molasses, and other. While the bioaugmentation is the addition of microorganisms itself that able to biotransform or biodegrade the contaminants. So this microorganism added can be completely new species and different from that one uh, or the microbial population in the contaminated site or maybe add more members of the same species that already exist in the uh, 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 contaminated site. If you look at this figure, you can find before augmentation and after augmentation. Before augmentation, A and B. A, this is the desired microorganism, and B, this is the, the other microorganism. After augmentation means you add more the microorganism like C. So A and C, this is the desired microorganism more than the other microorganisms. So you can facilitate the bioremediation process. One of the advantages of the in situ bioremediation is the no need to extract the contaminants. So no need more workers and also no cost. There are also disadvantages of the in situ bioremediation. The site of the bioremediation is not contained. Therefore, it's very difficult to control the conditions and monitor the progress. That means you can't control the pH of the contaminated site, cannot control also the temperature or any other conditions as well. So this is the one of the disadvantage of in situ strategies. So we have some considerations that should be taken for the site remediation. We have many different physical and chemical or technologies can be applied to partially or completely achievement of the bioremediation and can be involved a combination of different strategies. Number one, physical removal of pollutant, like using the extraction, excavation, and thermal desorption, and soil washing as well. The second strategy is the chemical treatment. You can use some chemicals like the strong oxidants to degrade or reduce the high concentrations of the some chemicals. Or maybe you can use the chemical reduction using the uh, reducing agents. You can add some reducing agents to stimulate the reductive precipitation of some heavy metals, for example, or the dechlorination of some chlorinated solvents as well. Also, palm and the treat systems using the above ground reactor. This is the also another strategy can be used based on water or wastewater treatment process, such as electrodeposition, nanofiltration, microfiltration, activated carbon absorption, also uh, 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 volatilization in air stripper, and reverse osmosis as well. Also another strategy can be used is the biological treatment using the bioremediation or what we call it the phytoremediation. It means this is the phyto means the plant. You can use the plant to do the bioremediation process. Also we have another strategy can be used is the monitor the natural attenuation. This one including the process that lead to the reduction of mass toxicity and also reduce the mobility or the volume of the contaminants without human intervention. So as mentioned before, these strategies can be combined together. That means you can use the physical treatment, then you can use chemical. Or maybe you can use the chemical first, then you can use the biological treatment and so on. So from this one, you can use the combination to facilitate and improve the bioremediation process. So if you look at the table provided, this table shows the or summarize the common physical chemical processes and application used in the bioremediation for the some treatment. 
So here we have the, see the uh, uh, treatment technology like the excavation. This is the process description means removal of the contaminated soil or maybe you can use the dredging. The dredging, this is the removal of contaminated sediments from the sludge. Or maybe you can use the groundwater extraction, removal of groundwater using the extraction wheels and pumps. Or maybe using the soil washing, maybe using the thermal extraction, free product recovery, surfactant as well. Maybe you can use for the treatment before the bioremediation and the some co-solvent washing, the heating, with oxidation, redox, manipulation, you can use reactive barrier also, you can use or acid leaching as well. So some of these treatments can be used to, uh, to enhance the bioremediation process. So now, if the bioremediation occurs under aerobic conditions or anaerobic conditions, actually sometimes occurs under aerobic, sometimes under anaerobic, it depends on the type of the pollutants and the site as well. So aerobic bioremediation is most favorable for the cleanup and reduce the pollutants, such as the hydrocarbons. So these pollutants uh, degraded faster under aerobic conditions than the under anaerobic conditions. And oxygen availability is common rare limiting factor. So the pollutants in such a case serve as electron donor and the carbon source for sub to support the microbial growth. So the pollutants in such a case can be used as the electron donor and the carbon source to support the microbial growth. We have some pollutants or compounds, highly chlorinated compounds, cannot degrade it under aerobic conditions. In such case, these compounds can be degraded only under anaerobic conditions, such as perchloroethylene and hexachlorobenzene. This is already oxidized using chlorine and cannot degrade it under aerobic conditions. So this compound degrade faster under anaerobic conditions by reductive decolorination and in such cases the pollutants don't serve as carbon source for the growth but as electron acceptors in metabolic or respiratory processes for example dehalo respiration process and the availability of the suitable electron donor can be also rare limiting. Now we need to explain what is the advantages of the in situ relative to ex situ bioremediation. One of these advantages is no bioremediation waste can be produced. Also minimal land and environmental disturbance. Also we can treat the large volume of contaminated soil and the groundwater and they can attack hard to withdraw the hydrophobic pollutants. Although the site characterization and the monitoring requirements are higher, the treatment costs are very low. It's also environmentally sound to process, which is easy to get public acceptance. Also, unlike pump and the treat approach, it doesn't dewater the aquifer. Also, we have some disadvantages as in situ treatment is generally slower than the ex situ treatment. Also, it's difficult to implement in highly stratified soils. Highly stratified soils means the soils with the many layers that hinders the vertical distribution of injected air or other gases through the contaminated zone. Also, we have the a major limitation is the inability to effectively treat the mixture of organic pollutants with the heavy metals. So this is the uh, sum of the disadvantages of the uh, in situ relative to the ex situ bioremediation. So this is the end of our video and I hope it was benefit for you and please don't forget to share like and subscribe.
and activate the bell to get all of the new videos. Thank you, good luck, and bye bye.